So the 26th of May um, is uh, Visakha Puja, a day in which Buddhists around the world um, recall and remember, celebrate uh, the birth, the enlightenment, the Parinipana of the Lord Buddha. It's a time uh, for us to uh, reflect upon certain ways of dealing with our situation, certain ways of living our lives as human beings. It's not just the recollection of some historical event. So as Buddhists, our belief in the enlightenment of the Lord Buddha is really a belief in the ability of or the potential for enlightenment in the human being and that includes ourselves because the Buddha was enlightened as a representative of the human race and his enlightenment uh, was a proof of our capacity uh, for enlightenment. So enlightenment might seem a long way away for uh, most of us, but if we break it down very simply, it's a matter of um, training and a matter of education, a matter of abandoning um, all that is unwholesome and unvirtuous in our body, speech and mind, cultivating all that is skillful and wholesome and good, and of purifying our mind. So whatever way of life we, um, we lead, whatever our role in society, whatever our responsibilities may be, uh, these challenges are constant. How can we abandon the unwholesome within us? How can we cultivate what is good and wholesome? How can we purify our minds? The, uh, the confidence that this is something that we can do and should do um, is vital. And the Buddha taught us that being born as a human being um, is in itself a great achievement. We must have created uh, much good karma in previous lives uh, to be here in the first place, um, but that it is our responsibility to make the very best use um, of this opportunity. Now in the, um, in the society today and in the, the world at large, there we are going through a very difficult time, um, whether it's the actual physical um, suffering of COVID or the, um, the grief that comes from losing a loved one to COVID or the general fear and anxiety uh, that we might uh, become infected uh, or perhaps even more worryingly that members of our family uh, might become infected by this virus. And then of course there is the uh, very um, burdensome um, effects on our finances and on our, um, our livelihood and on the, on the society at large. But here the, the Buddha reminds us that there is a distinction to be made between um, things that are very um, difficult to, to bear and to be with um, and the suffering that we may experience as a result of that. And these two things are not um, one and the same. They, they, are, they can be separated. That is to say, we can go through very difficult times and, and yet 
and not necessarily have to suffer from them um, mentally. And that's because mental suffering um, is always to one degree or another conditioned by um, cravings and desires. In the case of COVID, I think it's very clear, isn't it, that um, one of the fundamental um, desires and or thoughts that people have is that it shouldn't be like this, or I don't want it to be like this, or why is it like this? And so we expend a lot of unnecessary energy and we uh, think, run around in mental circles fighting against things that uh, we cannot um, overcome. The situation is like this. In fact, of course, during this um, unusual or unique period, uh, we are in fact facing um, very familiar challenges that with or without COVID, uh, we are subject to old age, sickness, and death. Um, our lives are much more vulnerable um, than we would perhaps like to think. There are so many ways um, in which uh, we can uh, fall ill or so many reasons um, for which we may have to um, be associated with things that we don't like, that we are separated from things that we do like, and that we are thwarted, we are unable uh, to fulfill um, many of our um, most basic desires and needs. So these, these um, kinds of challenge, how we deal with being associated, having to be close um, to, be binded with things we don't like, uh, how we deal with separation from what we do like, how we deal with not being able to get what we want. These are universal facts of human existence um, and the Buddha spoke of them and they didn't arise with the Buddha either. They were, they've been there as long as human beings have been in the world. So this uh, period, the COVID period, is just one more expression of very familiar um, challenges that we all have to face at one time or another. The question is, um, how can we make the best of things that we can't do much about? Well, the, um, the ability to uh, take care of our minds and not allow our mind to wander off and just to go round and round and round in circles uh, with anxious thoughts um, is extremely important. And to be able to do that, you need the muscle of mindfulness and awareness. And this is why meditation practice is so important, because in meditation, we are strengthening this mindfulness muscle. When we uh, focus on a particular object, then the mind wanders off and we bring it back again and again and again, and um, not allowing our mind to become discouraged or bored, then that ability to recognize when the mind wanders off and to bring it back um, in a peaceful but firm way, just as we would teach a child uh, not to misbehave uh, with love and with firmness, then we find it easier and easier to do that. And we become aware when the mind is starting to uh, get caught in uh, toxic or depressive uh, patterns of thinking, we can just let them go and re-establish awareness. When we are in the midst of a situation in which there's very much uncertainty, 
then the suffering comes because we want things to be certain. So when we can just embrace that uncertainty, yeah, right now we don't know, and be at peace with not knowing, and to bring our mind again and again back to the present moment, because this is our, our reality. The present moment is our true reality. And, and then we can ask ourselves, what can we do right now? Maybe not what we can do tomorrow or in the next month, or uh, not thinking in the abstract, but thinking very concretely about what can we do right now? What can we do this morning? What can we do this afternoon? Um, to make the best of the situation we find ourselves in, and learning to find ways to um, deal with the mind so we can keep the mind in a, um, in a happy or content um, frame. For, so that's not, uh, doesn't mean repressing negative thoughts, but recognizing them and just very gently letting them go. But the, uh, the practice of, of gratitude um, is a very helpful one here. When we're in a difficult situation, the mind tends to wander to all the things we don't have and all the things that are making our life difficult. Um, but simply bringing to mind all that we have to be thankful for in our lives, um, all that we have been given, whether it's from our parents or our teachers or from our our culture, there are so many um, things in our lives that when we stop and we think about them, then gratitude arises. And that gratitude is a great healer of the human heart. If during COVID you're in lockdown and you can't get out and about and you're, not, uh, you're leading a rather um, sedentary life, then physical exercise is very important. So these are, these are basics, these are things we can do. We can look after our body, uh, make sure we get plenty of exercise. Uh, we can look after our mind by developing the skills, meditation skills, particularly of mindfulness. And we can turn the mind to things that um, make it um, flourish and feel um, uplifted and happy, particularly uh, through practice of gratitude. Uh, we can chant and recite mantras. Um, we can do things together with our family. Uh, acts of kindness for others um, are uh, something that brings joy to our own hearts and of course um, is helpful to, to others. And at this time of COVID, there's nearly always someone who's worse off than we are, that we can do something uh, even if it's just a very small thing, uh, to help others. Um, and constantly looking to learn from this experience. Your life changes because of COVID. Um, are there things that have changed for the better? In, uh, in For many people's lives, they, they can realize how, how much of their lives they used to waste. In lockdown, many people who used to go to pubs and bars and stay out late at night, um, no, no longer able to do that. Um, and that's the suffering for them. But after a while, maybe they see, yeah, actually there's better ways of spending time than that. And people finding new hobbies, new, uh, new pastimes. And so within uh, what is generally a rather uh, dark and difficult period, um, there are things that can be learned and that we can uh, discover things that perhaps otherwise we might not have discovered. Most importantly, of course, as the Buddha teaches us that uh, life is very fragile, life is valuable. And this is something that we need to ask ourselves that given the fact that we have no guarantees how long we are going to uh, live in this world, how can we live in such a way that we feel we've done the best that we could um, every day? Uh, some successes, some failures, um, but overall, uh, we've really tried to create happiness and benefit for ourselves and happiness and benefit for those around us. And this is a key Buddhist principle that the 
the happy and productive life is one in which we are educating ourselves, training ourselves, cultivating ourselves, and also sharing um, our, uh, our efforts and our knowledge and our understanding and our goodness and kindness and trying to create benefit and happiness in those around us. Um, so I would like to offer the blessings of the Buddha and the Dhamma and the Sangha and all benevolent forces in the world that uh, we can all survive this difficult period and that uh, we can learn uh, important things which will, in the long run, increase the quality of our lives, our inner lives, our lives and our family lives and our lives in society. So I'd like to end with a blessing. Yatha variwaha pura paripurendi sagrang evami vaito tinang petanang upakapati ichitang batitang tumhang kipami wa samijato sapphe purendu sankapa janto pan raso yatha manijo tiraso yatha sapitiyo iwa janto sabharo ko vinasato Matem wat vantarayo suki tika yuko pawa apiwa tanasi lisa nitjang wata patjahino chataro tama watantia yuano sukang palang.